The history of Israel and the Kingdom of Judea is one of the most well-documented piece of history on earth. Well, at least in a theological sense, thanks to Christianity and Judaism. The histories of the people of Israel is well detailed in the Bible and according to the Bible, soon after the death of King Solomon, Israel was divided into two kingdoms, namely Judea and the Kingdom of Israel. Jews and Benjamin tribes occupied Judea while the remaining ten tribes occupied the Kingdom of Israel. Both the Kingdom of Judea and Israel were destroyed by the Assyrian Empire sometimes around 597 BC. The people were taken captives and were sent to various parts of the empire. The Jews eventually made their return to Judea, but the other tribes that made up the Kingdom of Israel never seemed to have returned to the homeland. The Kingdom of Israel seemingly became lost to history. What happened to the ten tribes of Israel? Are they still out there or have they gone practically extinct? This is a question that have baffled historian and religious people alike. And then there is this. What is going on? Now if you are from the Northeast or someone who follows news from the Northeast of India, there's a chance that you have come across this kind of news and article once in every blue moon. The Badai Manashe, the lost tribe of Northeast India returning to their homeland. You might be confused by the information presented to you and might even be amused. But I believe at some point you would have wondered if the claim of these people are legit or what the lost tribe story is all about. In order to understand what is going on, first we need to have an understanding of what the theory of the lost tribe is all about. As we have stated before, there's a theory of Israel's lost tribes and both anthropologists and the government of Israel has been on the lookout for Israel's lost tribes scattered around the globe. Israel has a policy called the Aliyah which enables ethnic Jews to return to Israel, fulfilling the basic tenet of Zionism. Now there's a Jewish organization called Amisav and the Survey Israel that have particular interest in bringing back this so-called lost tribe into Israel and in the late 20th century, Israeli rabbi Aliyahu Avikail of the group Amisov named certain section of Mizo people the Bnei Manashe based on their account of descent from Manashe and have assisted the slow migration of these people into Israel. It is not entirely false to say that the organization Survey Israel is largely responsible for the recognition of Mizo Jews as the lost tribe of Israel and their subsequent immigration into Israel. Now, Bnei Manasseh is the Hebrew term for children of Manasseh. The term is designated to Chin Kuki, Mizo or the Zo people who appears to have claimed descent from the biblical figure Manasseh, the older son of Joseph, who together with Ephraim forms the tribe of Joseph. But why do Mizos claim descent from Manasseh and not Dan, Simeon or any other Israel lost tribe? We'll need to look at Mizo oral tradition to answer this question. You see, most Chinkuki Mizo oral tradition maintains that the Zo people descended from an ancestor named Manasseh. The term has slight variation among different Zo languages. Some call him Manasseh, others call him Manmasi, and there are even people who call him Manusia. And among Zo people who do not have the figure Manasseh in their tradition, like the Paites, they have another figure named Puzo. This figure, Manasia or Puzo, is almost universal among all various Zo tribes, including Mizos, and form an important part of their identity. The name Manasia and Puzo are invoked in a lot of their ritual practices and also in times of hardship. Now, the claim among some Mizos and Jewish organizations is that this figure, Manasia, is actually Manasseh found in the Bible, and Puzo or grandfather Zo is Joseph the father of Manasseh from whom the tribe of Manasseh have descended. Believers in the theory and skeptic agree that similarities in names can be of pure coincidence and that Meso-Jewish ancestry cannot be attested just because these names sound similar. But there is more to this. Meso tradition, especially pre-Christian custom, surprisingly have quite a few similarities with Judaism and when Christian missionaries encountered the tribe in the late 19th century, they found similarities between some of their own biblical stories and Meso mythology. There are certain Mizo oral folklores and poems that look quite in tune with the Exodus narration of the Bible. For example, let us take this traditional chant of the Mar tribes. It goes like this. While we are preparing for the Sikpi festival, the big Red Sea becomes divided. As we are marching forward fighting our foes, we are being led by cloud during day and by fire during night. Our enemies are thick with fury. Come out with your shield and spears. Fighting our foes all day, we march along as cloud fire goes afore. The enemies we fight all day, the big sea swallowed them like beasts. Collect the quails and fetch the water that springs out of the rock. Does this sound familiar to you? 
According to the Bible, in the book of Exodus, as the children of Israel were exiting Egypt, Pharaoh sent an army in pursuit of them and cornered them at the Red Sea. Moses then, with the help of God, performed miracles by splitting the sea, allowing safe passage for the children of Israel, while Pharaoh and his army were stopped by a pillar of fire. Once the children of Israel made it to the other side of the shore, Pharaoh's army followed their path into the divided sea, where they were consumed by the water. The book of Exodus further says that after crossing the Red Sea, Moses led the children of Israel into Sinai, where they were led by cloud at day and a pillar of fire by night. Soon the Israelites could not find enough food and drink. God told Moses to strike a rock with his staff and water poured forth. Once when the Israelites were very hungry, God gave them manna and quails to feed them. Now these two accounts sound ridiculously identical and this is one of the strongest evidence to suggest Mizo people's connection with Israel, but it doesn't just stop there. The Mizo ancient religion called Sakwa also had certain similarities with ancient Judaism. There were sacrificial rites where the priests used to construct a sacrificial altar just like the Israelite practice, having four corners and would sprinkle animal bloods on the floor which were the normal practice of the Jews. Certain Mizo traditional garments have great resemblance to Jewish traditional souls. Could all this just be coincidence? Mizo and Jews may have certain similarities when it comes to certain cultures and traditions. After all, we all live in a globe and cultures are interconnected. But what about genetics? Do Mizo share any genetic similarities with Jews? This is another interesting question and we shall be looking into this uh, on the next video. If you like the content of this video and found it useful in some ways, please make sure to click thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I will try my best to upload more videos here and now. Thank you for watching. Adios.